welcome our pastor. Pastor, we are glad to see you. Amen. You're just on time. Amen. God is a God of divine timing. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And he is ready. He is ready, what pastor would say, to bring this way with power, anointing, transforming. What, what again? Accuracy. Accuracy, Accuracy. and might. Yes. <laughs> and what? Power. With power. Better than me. <laughs> Better give all that in my. Let us welcome Pastor. Pastor. <laughs> Could we put our hands together for the Lord? He is a good God. How many of you are glad to be here in the house of the Lord? The presence of the Lord is here. We give Him all the praise. We give him all the honor. We give him all the glory this morning. Help me sing this song. Hallelujah. You have won the glory. Come on. Let's sing it.
shout of praise. Let there be a shout of victory this morning. He has won the victory. He has won it for you. He's won it for me this morning. He is worthy of praise. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of power and dominion and might. Mighty God, we give you praise. We give you honor. And once again, Lord, we thank you that we can come boldly before your throne of grace. Lord, we come with the understanding that you have won the victory. You have won the victory. We are fighting from a position of victory, not defeat. Mighty God, I thank you that your presence is here. I thank you that your angels are here. And in the presence of the Lord, there is healing. There is deliverance. There is breakthroughs. Mighty God, I pray that the entrance of your word will bring light and life. I pray, Lord, that your word is going to flood our hearts and minds. Mighty God, we say, let your word come forth with power, yes. with might, yes. with accuracy. Yes. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we are careful always to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And the church of Jesus Christ say, Amen, amen. You may have your seats. Yes, if we're putting our hands together for the Lord, let us give him all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. And we had a wonderful time at the church in Londonville. Amen. But we are, we are thanking God for allowing us to be here this morning. And we are going to be sharing the second message in our series. What is our series for the month of October? Piercing the darkness. Piercing the darkness. As we've said, the month of October has become associated with darkness. But we are here. We are carriers of light. We are going to pierce the darkness of the enemy. Who remembers where our theme scripture was found? Isaiah 60. So let's read Isaiah 60 to establish our context. Verse 2 and 3. Amen. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Amen. So we thank God for his word. This morning as we continue in this series, we are going to be looking at the occult. And the dangers... Of opening up the door to the occult. God forbids his people from having any contact with the occult. He says, be ye separate. You are not of the world. We have to be separate. We are called out. We are the ecclesia, the called out ones. We are not to have any contact with the occult. Because... The occult brings certain dangers into your life, into your family. And we're going to be discussing that. And the occult manifests itself in various forms. Horoscope, Ouija boards, tarot cards, yoga, palm reading. All of these things are doors to the occult. And as a born again believer, you have no right opening up those doors. We say to you, stay away. Amen. Do not open up the door to the occult. Do not engage in reading horoscope. Do not engage in re palm reading. Do not engage in tarot cards. Do not consult with mediums and witches and obia men and women. When you do, you are opening up doors 
And you're going to get a lot more than you bargained for. It is not going to end well. Stay away. But you say, well, what is the occult? The word occult comes from the Latin word occultus. O-C-C-U-L-T-U-S. The word occultus means hidden, secret, or concealed. And within the religious context, the occult refers to secret or forbidden knowledge and power that is acquired through divination, spiritism, and magic. It is the quest for secret knowledge, forbidden knowledge, secret power. And the people who pursue the occult almost always do so for selfish and nefarious reasons. Take for example, Eve in the Garden of Eden. You didn't know that Eve opened the door to the occult? Well, you will you know, see that this morning. Eve opened the door to the occult. She couldn't resist the allure of secret knowledge that was promised by the deceptive serpent. Remember the serpent confronted Eve and he says, Did God really say you're not supposed to eat from this tree? She says, Yes. Because in the day that we eat from this tree, we will surely die. What did the wicked serpent say? In direct contradiction to the word of God. He says, You will not surely die. And here the lie. He said, This God who you think have your interest, he back squeezing on you. He holding back. He don't want you to be like him. That's why he tell you don't touch it. Because he knows that the day that you eat from that tree, you will be, your eyes will be opened. See? The promise of secret knowledge. Secret power. He says you will be like God. Eve, instead of Dismissing the serpent instead of elevating the word of God. She took the bait. And the minute she bite that fruit, I don't know if it was an apple, I don't know if it was a cherry or a pear. We don't know what kind of fruit it was, but we know it was a fruit. But the minute she bite that fruit, there was a change. Her eyes open and she opened up a door. And you see, when you open up that door, you give the enemy access. Would you open up the door to a thief? If a thief come knocking on your door and you realize he's a thief, he's telling you all kind of strange thing. Would you say, come in and do what you want? That is what Eve did. Because who is the devil? What did the Bible say about him? He's the father of lies. But he says he comes to steal to kill and to destroy. He's a thief. He's a killer. He's a destroyer. And whenever you open up the door to the occult, you're opening up the door to a thief, to a killer, to a destroyer. That's what you're doing. Because Eve opened up that door, we as a human race, we're still paying for that. And the sad reality is many people fall into the same trap today. You see, the devil has no new tricks. He comes to tempt and to tell you, I could give you secret knowledge, secret power, hidden power. You want to be popular? You want to be prosperous? You want to get position? Just open up this door. And the thing is, there are many people opening up that door, unknowingly giving the enemy access to their family, into their lives, to wreak havoc and destruction. And this is exactly what we will see in our text today. One of God's hand-picked leaders, he found himself in a bind of his own doing. 
And because of his own disobedience and rebellion, it says that God stepped back from him. Leaving a deafening silence in his wake. And so because there was an absence of the voice of God, there was no prophetic direction, this leader became like a fish out of water. He didn't know what to do. And so when he was faced with a crisis, the enemies were coming against him. He gave in to the temptation for this secret knowledge. And he went and opened up a door that he had no right opening up. Let's see the account now. It's recorded for us about the account of King Saul. In 1 Samuel 28 verse 3 to 10 when he decided to consult with a Obia woman from the town of Endor. Let's see what happens when you open up the door to the occult. 1 Samuel 28 verse 3 to 10. I will read. You can follow in your Bibles. It says, Now Samuel had died and all Israel had lamented for him. Buried him in Ramah, in his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the spiritists out of the land. So, this is what Saul did. At some point in time in the past, he had put them out. All of the Obia people. Banished them from the city. But it says, the Philistines gathered together and came and encamped at Shunem. So Saul gathered all Israel together and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. It says, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him either by dreams or by Urim or by the prophets. There was a deafening silence. And look at what Saul decided to do. Then Saul said to his servants, Find me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, In fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself. Look at the extent that Saul is going through. He disguised himself, put on other clothes, and he went. And two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. I always find it interesting. It's always by night. People all anytime anybody want to get into all kind of semi demi and all kind of thing, they always go in, in the night. And that's what we're talking about. Piercing the darkness, right? Listen to what he says. He said, Please conduct a seance for me. Do your, do your semi dimi. <laughs> he says, bring up for me the one that I shall name to you. Then the woman said to him, look, you know that Saul has done. He, how he has cut off the mediums and the spiritists from the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swore to her by the Lord saying, as the Lord lives... No punishment shall come upon you for this thing. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. We are talking this morning on the subject. Closing the door to the occult. And there are some textual implications that we need to consider. In this text, the writer begins by telling us that Samuel the prophet had died. And all of Israel were in mourning. Why is the Holy Spirit connecting the death of Samuel to Saul's ill-advised journey to the dark side? And this observation is even more crucial in light of the fact that Samuel had actually died three chapters earlier. In chapter 25. So... The fact that the Holy Spirit is mentioning this detail here is not to inform us but to remind us about the death of Samuel. 
Why is the Holy Spirit connecting the death of Samuel with the descent of Saul into the occult? What is the link? Because who is Samuel? Samuel was the major prophetic voice at that time. He was the one that God was speaking true to the people. He was the channel. So now that Samuel had died, it meant that there was no prophetic direction. There was no guidance available to Saul and the people of Israel. So Samuel's death symbolized the silencing and the removal of the prophetic voice from the life of Saul. In other words, the door to prophetic direction had been closed to Saul. Because God did not raise up anyone to take Samuel's place. And why was this happening? It was happening because Saul had hardened his heart. He remained in a state of rebellion. And what is interesting to note is that when you study the life and the career of Saul, you see that this daughter, the prophetic direction had been closed even before the death of Samuel. In fact, there was a defining incident in the life of Saul ten chapters earlier in 1 Samuel 15. And this incident became the fulcrum upon which the entire career of Samuel pivoted and ended in his eventual demise. What took place on that occasion? God had given him an instruction. That's why it's always important whenever God gives you an instruction you take heed and you follow that instruction. Amen. Amen. God had given uh, Sam, uh, Saul an instruction through Samuel to utterly destroy the Amalekites because of the evil they were doing against the people of Israel. But what did Saul do? It says he failed to carry out the instruction. He didn't kill the king. Agag, he, he, he spared Agag's life. And then he stole, he took back some of the spoils. He kept back some of the spoils. When Samuel came on the scene and said, Did you obey the voice of God? He lied. He says, Of course, I destroyed the Amalekites. But then Samuel, as he continued to talk to him, he heard the bleating of the sheep in the background. So Samuel said, but if you obeyed my instruction, why am I hearing this bleating of sheep in the background? Saul said, boy, it's the people. He threw the people under the bus. He said, them fellas wanted to keep back part of the spoils. He says, I kept back the best part to sacrifice unto the Lord. Samuel rebuked him. He says, is it that God is so interested in sacrifice that he will not honor his word? He says, to obey is better than sacrifice. And he says, the sin of rebellion is like witchcraft. And he said, because you, Mr. Saul, have rejected the word of God, God has rejected you today from being king. He was fired. It's a terrible thing to be fired from the job and still remain there. He remained on the job although he was fired for another 16 chapters. He knew his days was numbered. And yet, although the prophetic voice was silenced from his life, God we see a manifestation of the grace of God. Because God gave him time and space to repent. He had time and space to repent. 
He was fired in chapter 15. But his life came to an end all the way in chapter 31. So he had 16 chapters in the narrative to repent. You see, God doesn't want to destroy people, you know. He is long-suffering. Even when he is judged, even when he has bring judgment and discipline into your life, you will still see the grace of God at work. So although he had removed, God had removed the prophetic voice, although there was divine silence, he still gave Saul time and space to repent. But you examine the remaining chapters of this book. And the one thing that you will see missing from Saul's life was repentance. Although he had messed up big time, he rebelled against the voice of God, he did not repent. And the thing is, because he persisted in his rebellion, it led to his destruction. And the lesson for us here is this. When you persist in rebellion against the voice of God, ultimately you're going to destroy yourself. You may prolong others, but ultimately you are going to destroy your own life and purpose this is what happened to king saul he allowed his destruction his rebellion to destroy not only himself but his own family was destroyed the nation of israel was led into captivity because of the disobedience of one man that's why the bible says know for certain that your sin will find you out it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Almighty God. And there are a few things that we can take away from Saul's experience. Firstly, continued rebellion against the voice of God will result in divine silence and ultimately the extinction of God's presence from your life. If you decide to persist in rebellion against the voice of God, whether the voice of God comes through a servant, comes through the word, it really doesn't make a difference. If you decide to persist in rebellion against the voice of God, ultimately, the presence of God is going to exit your life. Because what we honor, we attract. What we dishonor, exit our life. So if you are obeying the voice of God, guess what? You're going to attract more of God's voice, more of God's guidance, more of God's direction. The Bible says that His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. As you begin to walk in obedience, the voice of God is going to shed light, guidance, direction in your life. You'll be able to navigate this life. Because that is what the voice of God represents. It represents light. Guidance. Direction. But if you choose to disobey. You know the voice of God is telling you something. You know that God He's given you confirmation. He's given you. He sent people into your life. To speak into your life. But you know better than God. You say nah. I go in so. Like Jonah. Ultimately what is going to happen is that the presence of God is going to leave. And that is going to open you up to more problems. But secondly, what happens is when the presence of God, the prophetic voice of God has exited your life, what it does it emboldens the enemy now to attack you. You see, the prophetic voice and the presence of God acts as a barrier. 
as a shield against the enemy. Remember when the enemy came, he wanted to attack Job. And he said, but I can't do nothing against Job. Look at, you have a hedge around him. You think Job serving you for naught? It's because you're protecting him. But you remove that hedge now, and he will curse you to your face. Isn't that what the enemy said to, 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 to God? So the point is, there is a hedge. There's a hedge in his spirit. We don't have to go to the occult to get a guard. You know them criminals and them fellas. <laughs> it's go by the you'll be a man and you'll be a woman. Give me a guard. <laughs> you all ever heard about that? Yes. They want a guard so that they can go and shoot up the place and then the guard will protect them. Not knowing that there's going to come a point in time when the guard will say, uh -huh, I gone. And many of them same fellas who put the guard in place. I don't know if the guard is be sleeping or what. <laughs> them same fellas is end up getting shoot up and killed. Because they see when you open the door to the occult, you get more than you're bargaining. So the point I'm making is as born again believers you have a hedge of protection around you. That's why the psalmist says the, the Lord sends the angels to encamp around those that fear him. You already have a God. You already have the blood around you. You have angels around you. Remember that incident with um Elisha. So what was happening? Elisha was sending intelligence to the king of Israel. So they were able to counter and spoil all of the plans of the king of Syria, I believe it was. And, and, and it got to the point where the king of Syria says, but somebody in here is a traitor. Or they're telling them fellas we plans. And somebody said, no, no, no. It have a fella called Elisha. <laughs> I don't know what kind of technology he operating with, but he knows what you are saying when you lie down in your bed. He's the man that's selling me out. He said, huh? go and surround the place. When the Elijah and his servant woke up, the servant saw the whole city surrounded. He panicked. He went and he told Elisha, he said, but Elijah, look at this. Look at the situation. We are under pressure. Elisha say, relax yourself. Say, Lord, open his eyes. When he opened up his eyes, the fellow see, he saw the, the, the physical um, soldiers surrounding him, but then he was able now to see in the realm of the spirit, he saw that the host of God was surrounding those that surrounded them in the natural. I want to say to you that when you are in obedience to God, the enemy may come and surround you, but the host of God is surrounding those that surround you. They can't touch you. There is a hedge. There is a hedge of protection. You have a spiritual God in place. But when you decide to disobey the voice of God, that hedge is lifted. And so when that hedge is lifted, the enemy sees an opportunity now to attack, to come in. And so the enemy is emboldened. He's not afraid anymore because it's open country. There's no spiritual fence. There's no spiritual guard. We could come in. This is what happened to Saul. In verse 4 of the text. It says. When the Philistines gathered together and came. And encamped at Shunem. It says Saul gathered all Israel together. And they encamped at Gilboa. And so. The enemy was emboldened. To come and attack Israel. Why? It's because of the consequences of Saul's rebellion. When the presence of God has exited your life. 
the enemy knows because he's not seeing that spiritual guard he's not seeing that spiritual hedge so he could come in but thirdly the absence of the prophetic voice from your life causes you to be mortally afraid of the enemy and what the enemy is doing all of a sudden all you could think about is what the enemy doing all you could talk about is what the enemy doing yes see what they're doing they're doing this they're doing that they're doing the other all you could talk about is what the enemy is doing you lose sight of what God is doing in your life you lose sight of the power of God in your life you lose sight of the protection of God in your life that is what the absence of the prophetic voice does why because God is no longer in your midst and the enemy knows that and so he comes to terrorize listen to what it says in verse 5 Saul was in terror it says when Saul saw the army of the Philistines he was afraid but this was not a normal fear listen to what the text says and his heart trembled greatly he, he started to shake like a leaf he is the king and he's shaking like a leaf <laughs> he don't know what to do this is why we need the prophetic voice this is why we need the presence of God in our lives it is the presence of God that gives us confidence boldness courage when the presence of God has lifted from your life you will start to fear your shadow you go start hearing all kind of thing you gain all kind of attack because the presence of the Lord is no longer in your life the Bible says he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world when you have that conviction you know that God is with you you know that God is gonna protect you you know you don't have to fear fear does not come from God you always need to remember that anytime you are being controlled by fear there's a demonic spirit present fear is not of God so if fear is not of God where, where do you think it come from the devil God says, I have not given you the spirit of what? Fear. But of what? Power. power. Of love. A sound mind. That is the presence of God. Power. Sound mind. Boldness. That's God. When you, when, you, when you are operating in those things, you know that God is with you. But if you know that you are operating in fear, you have a demonic spirit to drive out. But fourthly, when the prophetic voice is absent from your life, you cast off restraint. You now become an easy prey for the occult. You see, the prophetic voice provides a boundary. It provides limitations. It provides restraint. But when that is removed, you end up making poor choices poor decisions this is what happened to Saul Samuel was no longer present to give him divine direction and so he gave in to the dark side listen to what verse 7 and 8 says Saul said to his servants find me a woman who is a medium that I may go to her and inquire of her now look at how far Saul had fallen. This was the same man. When he first met Samuel. The Bible says that Saul prophesied with the prophets. The spirit of God came upon him. He was prophesying. This was the same man who had banished the spiritists and the mediums from the land. Now he is now seeking them out. And this is what happens when you close the 
door to the voice of God. When you harden your heart and persist in active rebellion against the word of God. The boundaries are removed. The restrainer is removed. And so you end up making poor decisions. And sad to say, this is what we see happening even today. What, what we see here with Saul is not something new. We see in this happening today. And many of you, I don't know how many of you are aware of this. But the person who started this ministry many years ago, a mighty woman of God, mightily used, flowing in the prophetic grace of God, mighty woman of God, she succumbed to the dark side. She opened up a door that she had no right opening up. The temptation for secret knowledge and secret power is so great. There are many ministers that are falling for this, this, this bait of the enemy today. And sad to say, there are many ministers that have brought the occult into the church. They perform all these kind of rituals. You, some, some of them, they use water. Sprinkling water on you. Some of them, they tell you, we have this special oil. Let me show you how to use this oil. Sometimes they may give you a piece of cloth. In fact, I saw one of them, they had a cloth with his palm printed on it. He said, when you put your hand in my hand, <laughs> things will begin to happen. All kind of demonic rituals. Where do we see that happening in the Bible? We need to be very careful. Sometimes they engage in all kind of rituals and sacrifices under the cloak of darkness. Why? They want to get secret knowledge. They want to get power. Some of them burying goat and chicken in the ground. Performing sacrifices. Some of them are venturing into the marine kingdom. Opening up the door to marine spirits. That's why they use a lot of water. Anytime you see them using water, watch out. They've opened up the door to the marine kingdom. All because of this quest for secret knowledge, secret power. This is what happened with Saul. He wanted secret knowledge. He wanted to know what to do. He was in a crisis. He was under pressure. The Philistines were coming. The voice of God had been silenced from his life. He didn't know which way to turn. And sometimes you may be in a situation and sometimes the enemy they set you up. You know. He's back into a corner. And then he will, he will dangle in front of you the quest for secret knowledge, power. Many pastors have fallen for that. Church ain't growing. Things are happening. And the enemy comes and dangles. I could give you secret knowledge. I could give you secret power. Your church could be packed out. The old people used to say, not all skin teeth is grin. Not all that glitters is gold. There's a day of judgment and reckoning coming. Saul, he didn't know what to do. He decided to open up the door to the occult. And he got more than he bargained for. 
this this story is a very interesting story you know because when he asked to see a woman to bring up samuel now usually who they would bring up is a familiar spirit a familiar spirit is a spirit that is familiar with you or your family they have your files they know about you so they disguise themselves pretending to be you that's why the bible says do not consult with the dead do not consult with mediums and spiritists you can't contact the dead the bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die and after death the judgment the people who die they are in either of two places either they are in the presence of the lord or they are in hellfire right now you can't bring them up whether they're in heaven or in hell you cannot bring them up what you are bringing up is a familiar spirit is a demon masquerading as that person and because that demon has your whole files all your library they know everything about you they pretend to be the dead person and so what they do they give you bait now the thing is when they gain your bait what do fishermen use as bait to catch fish they use fish they're using real fish right small fish but in that small fish is what a hook and when you bite it it hook your hook your your, your, your mouth and they, they really are in eh? and then the next thing you know you find yourself on a grill in the fire and then you hit somebody's stomach barbecue all kind of thing throwing on you eh? Eh? but when you take the first bite and you bite into the fish if you are fish yeah boy where this fish was all the time boy and then you realize but wait now oh uh. and then something pulling you pulling you pulling you until you find yourself in the pot that is how the enemy is operate so he's going to use bait that will deceive you and inside the bait is a hook that's why I say you have no right opening up this door to the occult because you're going to get more than you bargain for and both Saul and the Obia woman got the shock of their lives because instead of bringing up a familiar spirit God intervened and Samuel actually came up I don't know how this happened but God allowed it to happen because God allowed Samuel to come forth to bring a word of judgment against Saul listen to the account in 1st Samuel 28 17 to 19 when Samuel came up listen to what he said to Saul and the Lord has done for himself as he had spoken by me so the same thing that Samuel had said to Saul while he was alive is the same thing that was spoken to him in death. Listen to the words of Samuel. He says, for the Lord has torn. This was no familiar spirit speaking now. This was actually Samuel. He says, the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor David. Because, listen to the reason, you did not obey the voice of the Lord nor execute his fierce wrath upon Amalek therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day so Saul was reaping the consequences of his actions and Samuel now was reminding him when I was alive I told you to do such and such you refuse to do it and you continue in your rebellion instead of repenting Look at where you are now. You now come in to consult with see a woman. Listen to the judgment. And that wasn't the end. 
Moreover, he says to him, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow, you and your sons will be with me. In other words, you are going to die tomorrow. Look at the word. Did you think he was expecting to hear that news? When he went and decided to consult with the seer woman, that, that God will give you a judgment that you're going to be dead in 24 hours? And look at what happened here. It was not just him, but his sons fell into the mix. And not just his sons. Samuel goes on to say, The Lord would also deliver the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. So not only you going to get the judgment, but oftentimes, and sad to say, the people that are connected to you, this pass in the mix. And when we rebel against God, His word to us remains the same. There will be consequences for your rebellion. There are consequences for opening up the door to the occult. This is what Samuel was telling, to, to telling Saul. And look at that. He came to the end of his life. His life was cut short. God issued a, 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 a decree of death. Because that is what happened to people in the Old Testament who decided to consult with the occult. If you check in Leviticus chapter 19 and 20, God says the people that get involved in that, they shall be put to death. This is what happened to Saul. He got the shock of his life. He was expecting to get the structure, uh, direction. And instead he got a decree of debt. He got more than he bargained for. What is the lesson for us here? You need to close the door to the occult. Because if you open up that door, you're going to get more than you bargained for. You're going to reap consequences that will not just impact you, but will impact your family. That's what you're doing when you open up that door. When you decide to go and play fast and loose with horoscope. You decide to go and play fast and loose with palm reading. You decide to go and play fast and loose with yoga. You know what those yoga poses do? You know why you are told to go into... Some people say, just exercise. Not knowing that when you contort your body in these positions, these are positions of worship to these demonic entities. You are now opening up yourself. And they, they, they use this term called the chakras. You open up the chakras in your spine and so on for these spirits to come in and wreak havoc. No born again believer wants to have anything to do with yoga. Stay away. Amen. You are opening up a door to the occult. Stay away. Don't get involved in that. Do not go and ask, let anybody read your palms. Do not let anybody give you fortune telling. Do not allow your children to get involved in trick and treat. All of those things are demonic. You're opening up doors to the devil to come in and wreak havoc. You need to insulate them from those things. All of those things are occultic practices. And as born again believers, we have to close every door to the occult. And as I conclude this morning, I want to remind you that the law, the desire to seek out forbidden knowledge from the occult 
is a great temptation to many. Just ask Eve. Just ask King Saul. That's why people go and consult with the Obia men and the Obia woman. They say, I bring them to your church and nothing happened. And that is an indictment against the church. I agree. But that is no reason to decide I'm going to go to the Obia man, the Obia woman, the witch doctor, or whatever you want to call them. Because when you do that, you're going to get more than you're bargaining for. It will not end nice. Some people are in a quest for position, in their quest for popularity, in their quest for prosperity. And some people in their quest to destroy other people. They go to the Obia man and the Obia woman. Not knowing that the same gallows that they're building for that person is the same gallows that you will be hung on. Just ask him on. So no matter what the reason is, anytime you open that door to the occult, it's not going to end well. That's why God said to the people in Leviticus 19 and 20, he says, give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. He says, the person who turns to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them. God says, I will set my face against that person and cut them off. Because God sees any involvement with the occult as spiritual adultery, as prostitution. He marks people who engages in those things. And he removes himself from their lives. And that's the worst thing that can happen. Where the presence of God departs your life. You know open game. You become a spiritual vagabond. Without direction. Without guidance. You now become an open target. To the onslaught of the enemy. And I'm saying to prevent all of that from happening. It's time. To close the door and keep it shut against the occult. Shall we bow for prayer this morning? Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory, mighty God. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of honor. Could we stand in the presence of the Lord? We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Mighty God, we thank you for your word. This is a sober word of warning. Mighty God, I pray that you would give us the strength, give us the discernment, Lord, to see the devices of the enemy. Lord, I pray that you would give us the ability to not compromise. God says there is a spirit of compromise prevailing the land. A spirit of compromise. There are many believers that are compromising their values and their virtues. And that spirit of compromise is going to cause you to open up doors you have no right opening up. So we are praying against every spirit of compromise. In the name of Jesus, I break every spirit of compromise. I break every voice that is not the voice of God. Voices that are speaking in your head. Voices that are trying to get you to compromise. We break those voices. We silence those voices right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty God, I pray that you will break every yoke every fetter
every form of bondage every form of captivity of the enemy we break every yoke and every chain of the enemy right now in the mighty name of Jesus we lose the people of God father I pray that your light and life will pierce our hearts I pray Lord that as carriers of your light we will pierce the darkness all around us Lord I pray that our very presence will cause demons to flee in the mighty name of Jesus we say let God arise and let his enemies be scattered I scatter the works of the enemy right now every temptation to get into the occult we break and destroy right now father I pray that you would give your people wisdom and guidance as we navigate this season of darkness coming upon the earth that we will not compromise we will be known as children of light we'll be known as light bearers we will walk in a straight path Lord father I pray that our very presence will bring conviction to those that we interact with conviction to our families those who are on the outside conviction to our friends conviction to our colleagues Lord let the light that is in us shine brightly and pierce the darkness that is covering the people mighty God so Lord we thank you for all that you are going to do in and through us beginning this month Lord we're going to drive back the forces of darkness Lord we are careful always to give you the praise the honor and the glory if there's someone here this morning you need special prayer you have a situation a circumstance you need prayer come to the front quickly we're going to pray with you and for you the worship team lead us in an appropriate song Anyone that needs prayer, you can come to the front at this point in time. Self aware, so you can you. I give myself away So I give myself away Yes, you can form a line So you can use me Hallelujah With uplifted hands I give myself away so you can use myself away. I give myself away. So you can use me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Here I stand.
in agreement with Sister Jean concerning her family, concerning Shakti and the family against the attacks from the dark side. And so Father we give you praise. We lift up Sister Shakti. We lift up the members of the family in the name of Jesus. Lord I pray that you will guard their hearts and minds against any attack right now from the dark side contrary spirits those doors that have been opened up mighty God mighty God we call forth chaos and confusion in the enemy's camp right now we release swords and spears to gouge out the eyes of those spirits that have been sent on assignment we bind those spirits right now we call for the fire of God to consume and destroy every contrary spirit every spirit of religion right now in the mighty name of Jesus Lord you promised to raise a standard against the enemy so lord i pray raise that standard in that home right now against every attack of the enemy mighty god we pray lord that the light of your presence and your spirit will pierce the darkness and dissipate the darkness i drive back all of those spirits that have been released right now in jesus name I bring their work to naught in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for the salvation of all of the family members. Mighty God, those who are involved in every form of evil and wickedness, I pray that you will bring conviction upon them in Jesus' name. We pray that you will cause them, Lord, to experience godly sorrow, to repent, and to give their lives to you mighty God Lord I pray that you will turn around what the enemy has intended for evil turn it around for your good Lord we are praying for souls to be one into your kingdom in Jesus name Amen and Amen God bless you So Father, we give you praise. You all could sing softly. You all could sing softly. Praise the Lord. So Lord, we lift up the family of Sister Natalie. She's standing in the gap. She recognized, Lord, that they are in a false religion. They are in darkness. They are in deception. Mighty God, I pray that the light of the gospel will shine forth and pierce the darkness God I pray that you would enable them to see their true spiritual condition right now I loose them from every form of captivity in the name of Jesus every member of the family that is in bondage we cut asunder every cord that binds in the name of Jesus I loose them right now from the bondage of the enemy in the name of jesus lord let your light shine forth let your light 
bind the enemy mighty God and scatter the enemy right now in the name of Jesus Lord I pray that you would use sister Natalie as a point of contact to bring about deliverance in the family mighty God open their eyes to see Lord loose them and set them free we pray that the spirit of repentance and godly sorrow will reign and rule in their hearts Lord so Lord we claim them for the kingdom loose them from every form of captivity in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah So you can use me My life is not my own To you I belong Lord, we thank you for your servant All that you are doing, all that you have started to do in his life Lord, we pray for that appointment that he has next week Pray that you will give him favor in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, give him guidance, give him direction. In every decision that he has to make, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you will give him strength. Strength, Lord, to finish and to finish strong. So, Lord, we just commit Brother Ali into your hands. Commit his family into your hands. Protect and preserve and keep him, Lord. Give him eyes to discern. Give him ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Lord, give him wisdom beyond his years. Lord, we thank you for good success. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful to me. Here I am to Very informative message this morning. Closing the doors to the occult. Well, we listen to the message and some.